sure has been nice to see sunshine and warmer temperatures this week, especially after all of that snow and cold Certainly. last week. <laughs> yeah, and McCall, we've heard from a lot of people who just want to know what is spring <laughs> and severe weather season going to be looking like. This is your highly anticipated forecast, so what can you tell us? Well, I was looking through a lot of information and a lot of data putting this forecast together, a lot like when I do the winter outlook, but a little different for the spring outlook because it's a totally different type of setup. So let's start out with the baseline on any given year on a normal year, we start to see severe weather ramping up pretty much in the month of April, enhancing through May, June and July with our peak tornado potential right around that May and June time frame. Now this data is a probability of any tornadoes in any given month throughout the year from the Ohio Committee for Severe Weather Awareness. And as I mentioned, you start to see the severe weather really ramping up around the month of April. Now that's important with this forecast leading into your 2021 season because there was a study done in 2017 in the Journal of Applied Meteorology and Climatology that talked about the correlation of La Nina in late winter and early spring months and how it impacts severe weather. Now in an El Nino year, you have the Pacific jet that tears through the bottom part of the United States. What that does is it keeps the Gulf moisture locked to the south and doesn't allow it to feed further north into the United States. But in a La Nina year, the jet stream is much further north. You can get the warmer moist air to move into the central part of the plains and even as far north as the Tennessee River Valley, the Ohio River Valley, bring that severe potential further north as well. And we're in a current La Nina setup. While it's expected to fade a bit as we head into the spring season, it is with us now and could lead to an early onset for severe weather. Now what may combat that is the fact that we had an Arctic blast in the middle of February. Cold air surged so far south it brought snow to Texas and cooled the waters in the Gulf. They are cooler than normal right now. That would perhaps lend itself to a delayed start to severe weather. But I feel that the La Nina impact in the jet stream is greater than the cooler Gulf waters and we may see severe weather striking a little bit earlier on than April. So we're going to have to watch out as to what happens in the month of March. I'm also seeing trends for a warmer than normal season and a wetter than average season as well. Now I know a lot of us may start to head out of town as more people get vaccinated and feel more comfortable to travel. So I spoke with Chief Meteorologist uh, Joey Selipak from our Memphis sister station about what you can expect if you're traveling to Tennessee this year. You know, what we're looking at here is going to be, I think, an extenuation of what you predicted for your own region. We're going to have a very active uh, March, April, May. We see a huge warming trend out of the southwest that encompasses us. And we're sort of in the national uh, hotspot when we get those cold blasts from the Pacific Northwest. I'm looking for an increase uh, in tornadic development, damaging winds, hail. I think that's going to be a big threat for us. And that seems to be the trend through much of the country because of that La Nina phase. So if you're headed out of town, this is my outlook. If you're in the regions such as Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky, including the state of Ohio, you can expect a wet and warm uh, spring season, very active with those stronger thunderstorms. If you're going to travel southwest or southeast, perhaps down to Texas, Arizona, Georgia, or Florida, hot and dry conditions. But dry is always that tricky third ingredient. You get the dry air. That that really helps to feed into some stronger thunderstorms. So a higher frequency and storm intensity is expected through the Plains states into the Tennessee River Valley and the Ohio Valleys as well. Of course, I'm always going to keep you updated right here on Channel 7 as we head into the spring season. If you want to see more of my discussion that I had with Joey, head over to our streaming apps. Uh, you can find that on WHIO.com, Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV as well. We talk a little bit more about severe weather season as a whole. Take it back closer to home in Piqua. Quiet conditions now. Temperatures are chilly. Certainly doesn't feel like spring. We're sitting at 34 degrees and we're going to drop into the middle 20s by daybreak tomorrow. All is quiet. We have some clouds out there that moved in earlier this evening, but they continue to break apart and we'll have a mainly clear sky as we progress towards sunrise tomorrow morning. But I am watching the rain that is forming down in northeastern Texas, Oklahoma and 
through Arkansas. You can see actually there is a severe thunderstorm warning down there currently. No severe weather with this, but it is going to bring us the chance for rain later tomorrow night into the start of your weekend. And that's just the first round of showers that I'm tracking over that Saturday Sunday time frame. Out the door tomorrow, grab the jacket. We're in the mid 20s. Long sleeve for the afternoon as we push to the mid 40s and you'll need the sunglasses because we do have the sunshine at least to start the day. We get up to 46 degrees tomorrow afternoon and hold in those 40s through the evening. Then this weekend, look at these highs, 50s, 54 on Saturday, nearly 60 on Sunday. And as I mentioned, there is the chance for rain there, but also some dry time if you need to do some things outside of the house, maybe do the car wash. I know some people have been trying to get that done, so I'll show you the dry time here on Futurecast over the next uh, 30 seconds or so. As we move into tomorrow, notice we have plenty of sunshine. There's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. By 8 o'clock tomorrow evening, showers start to push in, so your Friday evening plans look a little bit wet for you. 7 a.m. on Saturday, showers are ending. Now, most of Saturday after that is going to be quiet, and you can see we actually get some breaks in the clouds. Remember, highs in the mid-50s, so this is the time to get out and do uh, some things outside. Enjoy the weather. I know I'll probably take Gia on a nice walk on Saturday, do something fun outside as we've been locked up because of that winter cold recently. Now, as we move into Sunday, you can see rain moves back in, and it will be especially south of I-70. That's where I see the steadiest of the rain to form. Still some showers through midday, and then by Sunday afternoon, early evening, we begin to see those showers taper. Again, the temperatures, even though we track the rain on Sunday, nearly 60 degrees. Once the rain ends, the cooler air will settle in, but we're still above average for Monday and Tuesday, with highs in the mid to upper 40s. Thank you, McCall. New information to pass along.